What is going on guys, it is Wrestlemania here, back with another video. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of Raw, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including The Rock returning on Raw, Cody Rhodes is allowed to break WWE's rules, Tony Khan is still very angry at Jack Perry for losing CM Punk, Matt Hardy to WWE, The Fiend Bray Wyatt was gonna be on his return, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania Shorts. As always, we won't recap the show, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one six-pack qualifiers. Last night's three six-pack qualifiers were solid matches that showcased the depth of the tag team roster and gave each team the opportunity to showcase their skills. The six-pack ladder match is shaping up nicely and it may steal the show at WrestleMania 40. Number two, Becky's badass brawl. And should Becky Lynch be fighting last woman standing matches just weeks before she steps into the ring with perhaps her most dangerous opponent yet? Well, on paper, no, but it's a great way to display Becky's fighting spirit and show while she'll be at the top of her game when she faces Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania. Number three, strong contract signing. The contract signings are cliched, but last night's Intercontinental contract signing was actually a pleasant change of pace, as it was no physicality. Instead, it was a battle of the wills, as Gunther dismissed Sami Zayn's threat as a challenger, and Sami reminded the ring general of everything he's accomplished despite the naysayers. Sami is always at his most dangerous when an opponent underestimates him, and Gunther may be the latest opponent to learn the hard way. Number 4. Intrigue with Gable and Zayn Sami Zayn's contract signing was all the more dramatic due to his backstage segment with Chad Gable. The Alpha Academy leader's disappointment at losing his shot at the Intercontinental Championship is eating him up and there's no telling where it will lead to. Gable telling Zayn he doesn't have a chance against Gunther adds to Zayn's underdog story, but it also raises the possibility of a bitter Gable doing something that costs Zayn the win. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but fans have to be thinking about this possibility and an interesting Candice indie dynamic. Another interesting undercard subplot is Candice LeRae's willingness to win at any cost and Indy Hartwell's indecision over where she's going along. The WWE has made this subplot interesting enough that fans are curious whether Indy will abandon Candice over her ruthless aggression or go along to get along. That was a good, what about the bad, as number one, Caden Carter and Katana Chance continued a job. The WWE deserves praise for building up its women's division, but not for its booking of Caden Carter and Katana Chance. The former NXT Women's Tag Team Champions and WWE Tag Team Champions are one of the WWE's better acts, so why does their only purpose on the main roster seem to be develop other women's storylines? Last night's loss to Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell was the latest example of Carter and Chance being used for no other reason than to put over someone else's storyline. They should be competing for their tag titles, not being used as supporting characters. Now there was nothing downright ugly as the WWE did continue its good build to WrestleMania with some excellent qualifying matches, a slobber knocker of a main event, and several strong promos with the Usos, Cody, and Seth Rollins. While Cody Rhodes can't out-talk The Rock, the American Nightmare's charisma and passion does make up for this. Hence why we didn't really put it in the good or the bad, it's just kind of in the middle. But despite WrestleMania being three weeks out, the WWE continues to maintain a steady and entertaining pace, wedding fans' appetite for Mania, but also making them watch every Raw and SmackDown along the way. What do you guys think of Raw this week? Let us know in the comments down below. Now, let's move on to the news. Now, first story looks at The Rock returning to Raw. It's big news for Rock fans as a People's Champion is scheduled to appear on the first April edition of Raw, and it's not an April Fool's. The Rock will be appearing on Raw on April 1st live from Brooklyn, New York, this being the go-home show of WrestleMania 40. It'll be interesting to see what last-minute angles the WWE books during the last few days before WrestleMania. Next up, Cody is allowed to break the rules in WWE. Now, if you caught Cody's promo last night, you may be wondering whether the WWE is relaxing its rules on the use of profanity. While the WWE has made an exception for The Rock, who seems to say whatever he wants, there were reports that WWE wasn't going to allow anyone else to break the WWE's rules. However, Dave Meltzer reports that WWE has made an exception for Cody and why they did so. There was a memo, everyone got it, but they gave Cody. They knew that he had to come back against Rock, but there was absolutely a memo. I got from several different guys, and there's been other reporters who have too, so that's not nothing. Despite Meltzer's use of a double negative, the report makes it clear why Cody could cuss. And no one else is allowed to do that, but he, Cody, was given the opportunity to do it because basically they want him to stay babyface, essentially. And if he came off badly in this promo and The Rock came off great in Memphis, it's like, that's not what they want. 
Cody needed to cut a strong reply to The Rock's scathing attack on SmackDown or risk looking weak. Do you think Cody's promo did the job though? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Tony Khan's still very angry at Jack Perry for losing CM Punk. As CM Punk's 2023 departure from AEW is apparently still troubling AEW president Tony Khan and according to Dave Meltzer, AEW star Jack Perry is still being punished for what's seen as his role in Punk's exit. During a recent interview with the Wrestling Observer Radio, Brian Alvarez brought up the question of whether Jack Perry has been fired by AEW. Meltzer responded that while Perry hasn't been fired, he's been iced and left off programming. Meltzer elaborated on why AEW isn't using Perry. Tony's really mad at him because he cost him CM Punk. He's getting the blame. He probably should have been suspended for a month or two. Where are we at? Seven months now? Seven months? It's ridiculous. The punishment doesn't fit the crime at this point. I mean, it's like it's his fault because the other guy just lost his mind. Now the baby schools are thought on who to blame for AEW ending Punk's contract. Some fans blame Jack Perry for his comments at All In that reportedly irritated Punk enough to confront him. Others blame Punk for losing his cool. Some fans blame Tony Khan for failing to maintain order amongst his wrestlers. But who do you guys think is to blame? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, is Matt Hardy returning to WWE? Is former WWE superstar Matt Hardy returning to WWE? Well, fans have been asking this ever since news broke that Matt's AEW contract is expiring sometime in March. Now, fans have another reason to think Matt may be returning to WWE, and he and his wife Rebby attended Raw last night. During the broadcast, Michael Cole name dropped Matt and Jeff, referencing their brother vs. brother match at WrestleMania 25 when Cole talked up WrestleMania 40's Jay and Jimmy Uso bout. Rebby tweeted a video of her and Matt attending the show at the PNC Arena. It's not unusual for wrestlers from other promotions to visit their friends in a rival promotion. Just last Wednesday, Bailey, Tamina, and Naomi attended AEW Dynamite to support Mercedes Money's debut. Is this video just a case of Rebby and Matt enjoying a WWE event, or is it a subtle message to Tony Khan that Matt has options besides AEW? If Matt opts for the WWE, brother Jeff won't be able to join him as he still has time on his contract. While AEW could grant him an early release, it's unknown whether Tony Khan would do so. Next up, CM Punk announces he'll be at WrestleMania 40. Now, unfortunately, Punk's dream of main eventing at WrestleMania was put on hold after he tore a tricep during the Royal Rumble. However, Punk is letting fans know he plans on being at this year's showcase of the Immortals. Punk cut a video promo to promote his appearance on next week's Raw in Chicago, informing fans, WrestleMania is in Philadelphia. What are the first four letters in Philadelphia? Phil, whether or not I'm invited, it never matters to CM Punk. He'll be there. While Punk isn't cleared to compete for several months, it wouldn't surprise us to see Punk confront Drew McIntyre, who's been talking trash to Punk ever since his injury. If Punk shows up at WrestleMania, fans could even see him involved in the Drew McIntyre vs. Seth Rollins World Heavyweight Championship match. And finally, the fiend Bray Wyatt was going to be revealed. A peacock is preparing to air Bray Wyatt becoming immortal during the week of WrestleMania 40. Inside the ropes, Alex Hunter's reporting, along with never before seen footage from the former world champion, other wrestlers who will feature in the documentary include Hulk Hogan, John Cena, Becky Lynch, Triple H, and Wyndham's brother Taylor Rotunda, known to wrestling fans as Bo Dallas. The documentary is described as Bray Wyatt is one of the most revered and mysterious characters in WWE history. The story behind the character and the man himself, Wyndham Rotunda, has never been documented until now. Using never-before-seen interviews and exclusive backstage footage, Wyndham Rotunda's inspiring story unfolds. This documentary chronicles Wyndham's incredible rise to worldwide fame as a WWE superstar and the struggles and success that came with being a creative visionary. While Bray Wyatt isn't going into the 2024 Hall of Fame class as many fans hoped, this video will show just how much he affected the industry during the relatively short run in the business. Our fans are also intrigued by a new photo that shows an alternate version of the late great Bray Wyatt's Fiend costume. As you can see from the picture, the Fiend shares a similar look with the iconic Predator character from the film series. In addition, the Fiend's lantern is designed like his mask rather than a Bray Wyatt's head. It's a damn shame he never actually got to wear it though. But there you have it folks, our look at Raw as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.